want to see someone systematically disprove everything you have read about trading stocks and expose how and why you will consistently lose money if you aren't doing it right? Click the link in the description to check it out for yourself. But now for today's video. The question, what are puts and calls in stock trading? Answer by, Sri Gopal Bhatt. Well let me share the detail in simple. Both comes into future and option segment. And call and put are options. If you feel that Nifty is going to move up by 2% in a week time you have an option to buy call option and Nifty moves up by 2% you will gain some good profits as the movement will. Be of 200 points from current market price and 50 point premium approximately. Overall you gain 150 points. Similar case for put option if you feel that Nifty is going to go down by 2% then you have the option to buy put option. And Nifty moves down by 2% then same way you will make profits here also and the calculation is as same as call option. But in case of no major movement in Nifty then you will list the premium paid and if it's in the money call or put you will receive the difference of strike and sear and market price. At zero duh, all stock investments are free and a maximum of 20 rupees is charged per executed order for options, futures, commodities, and currencies. Charges equity and mutual fund investment, zero brokerage, F and O and commodity trading, flat 20 rupees per order. Click here to open account in 2 minutes, open online account. Happy investing, regards, Sri Gopal Bhatt. Answer by, Jason Shimshi. I apologize in advance for the long response. Both puts and calls are standard contracts to buy or sell a certain amount, usually 100 shares, of a particular stock at a specific price by a specific date. It's easiest to explain using an example of a call. Let's say an investor, Jim, believes that Facebook, ticker symbol FB, is going to rise in price. In order to take advantage of his opinion, Jim purchases a call option on FB. He needs to specify the price that the call option allows him to buy 100 shares of FB. This is called the strike price. He also needs to specify the date by which he needs to exercise the contract to buy the FB shares. This is called the expiration date. So let's say that Jim buys one call option with a strike price of 180 and an expiration date of January 20th, 2018. Jim pays the seller of the call option a certain amount for the right, but not the obligation to buy 100 shares of FB at $180 slash share by January 20th, 2018. The cost of the option will depend on FB's current price relative to the strike price, $180, and the expiration date. In this example, let's say that the premium is $3.25 slash share. That would mean that Jim paid $325 for the call option. $3.25 slash share times 100 shares. On the other side of the option trade, another investor, let's call him Bob, sells, or writes, a call option on FB with a strike price of 180 and an expiration date of January 20th, 2018. When he sells the call option to Jim, Bob receives the $325. In exchange for receiving the option's premium, Bob is now obligated to sell Jim 100 shares of FB at $180 anytime between the option trade date and January 20, 2018. Essentially, Bob has accepted the risk of the price of FB increasing in return for the $325 in options premium. If the price of FB stock is above the strike price on the expiration date, then Jim will exercise the option. The call option requires that Bob to sell him 100 shares of FB stock at $180 slash share, regardless of what FB stock costs at the time. This can be costly for Bob. If FB stock costs $250 slash share on the expiration date, Bob will still have to sell the stock to Jim for $180 slash share, as specified in the call option. So why would Bob sell a call option? It could be to simply generate a little extra income. Bob may not have believed that FB stock would rise in price. If the stock's price was less than the strike price, the call option will expire worthless and Bob keeps the option premium, the $325 he received from Jim. Why does the option expire worthless in this case? Because if Jim wants to exercise the option, he has to pay the $180 slash share as specified by the call option. If FB is trading at less than $180 at expiration, Jim can simply buy FB stock on the open market for less than the strike price of the option. You can tell that things can get very complicated very quickly with equity options. There are lots of different strategies that use calls and puts. And speaking of puts, they are the opposite of calls. The owner of the put has the right, but not the obligation, to sell 100 shares of a stock at a specific price, the strike price, by a certain date, the expiration date. 
The seller of the put is obligated to buy the stock from the put owner at the strike price on or before the expiration date, if the put owner exercises the option. In general, calls increase in value as the underlying stock price increases, while puts increase in value as the underlying stock price drops. Both calls and puts tend to lose some value over time, slowly at first, but faster. In the last few days before the expiration date, the bottom line is to study up on options trading before stepping in with real money. There are lots of resources online, Investopedia has a good summary. I hope this helps. Answer by, Jason MG. Call and put options are options trading. Options are basically contracts written in order to buy or sell stocks, just like the options to purchase when you buy a house. The house is the stock and the call and put are the options to purchase. Basically, just like the options to purchase in a home transaction, call and put options allows you to book to buy or sell the house at a fixed price in the future. This means controlling an asset with just a small deposit, which in turn means leverage. Call and put options can do far 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 more. Not only does it help you make a leveraged return when stocks go up or down, it also helps you profit even if the stock goes sideways. Yes, that is why options are the most powerful and versatile financial instrument ever created. Real options trading is not binary options, this must be made clear. To learn how options work in layman terms and using everyday examples like I just did above, please read, Options Trading for Dummies. To know what the difference between binary options and real options is, please read difference between binary options trading and real options trading.